our players to the bottom left hand side of the map. Our blue zerg is going to be from Psy Storm Gaming. Let's see it, guys. He's going to be cheering on. True. We are going to be playing on the NA server, guys. So latency is something we'll sort of discuss, but for the most part, it's going to be the fairest situation for all players. You know, obviously, True lives in NA, so he's probably going to be best off. But say for Guru versus Beyond. The both players should have sort of similar sort of latencies and so on. As we have to the bottom right hand side, that red Zerg player right now from True Esports. It is Guru. So to kick off into game one of this best of three series, we are just going to be setting up and looking to see what these guys want to get up to. So pull first from Guru here to start us off. Did cast a little bit of Guru ZVZ yesterday when he was playing against Blyde during the WCS qualifiers. He also opened for pool first, although that was on Frozen Temple, a map where you're very likely to see sort of 14 gas, 13 pool. On this map here, to see this pool's coming down so early, it's kind of interesting. So intrigued to see how this goes, we are just going to be seeing pull first into Hatchery. Guru will probably make 4 to 6 Zerglings off of this and try to give you, you know, try to be a little bit aggressive with them. Try to get a little bit of damage done. He might even run the long way around on the map. He might not go through the southern pathway. He might go up north around this longer pathway across the map just to hide those links and maybe catch his opponent a little bit off guard. As we are just going to be seeing. Pool gas finishing up over here. We're going to be seeing the uh, drones jumping on into that uh, extractor as well. On the other side of things from True, well, he's just going to go for that very standard hatch gas pool. So, for him, I mean, it's sort of like a slight build or an advantage because he's not doing anything aggressive. And so, the safety of Guru's pool first doesn't really pay off at all. Whereas, True's build is just, you know, is, you know it's not going to be punished at all. We haven't actually seen Guru make any zirclings at all either. So, this is just Guru sort of setting up in a bit of a different... I mean, they're both going to end up in a very similar scenario. It's just slight differences here. Um... Guru is going to have a slightly faster first queen, but his second queen is going to be a little bit slower, for example. So, small differences between the players with these build orders. Maybe a slight advantage, true, but not too much. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize Major was on the screen there. Apologies. Just, uh, I forgot that I reloaded my uh, expert presentations today, which resets it. And for some reason, my um, expert is... Um, for some reason, my uh, expert presentation, my standard presentation, has Major's name saved in it. So, uh, apologies for that, guys. As always, it was, it was meant to be such a good start today. I felt so good. I felt as though it was going to be a good day, and then all of a sudden, we've kicked things off. We started on time, and everything started to fall apart since then. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Anyways, True goes into the Bane and S, but it is going to be Guru with the Roach Roran. So, he's going to start playing at Roaches very early on in this game, and we'll see how many he wants to make. He's already got three on the way up. So three roaches already on the way up right now. Uh, does he go into kind of seven, eight, and really push across the map, and then reinforce with zerglings, or is he just going to use these few roaches to be defensive? As more roaches get made here, six roaches. This really does look as though Guru is going to be aggressive across to the other side, and then with reinforcing zerglings with speed. Obviously, the zerglings get across the map very quickly to reinforce, and that can be very, very powerful as well. As we are just going to see the roaches gathering up together a few lings starting to come out here 14 of them in the production tab so 14 lings in the production tab and they're going to start moving over to the left hand side as we do see Rotoron coming up in the back of the natural expansion the third hatchery also coming down right now from true so here we go we're going to see these lings and roaches starting to head over to the left side of the map I'm going to be seeing a uh, cancel on the extractor there as True is actually going to pull away. He's going to add on a second spine crawler, realizing what's going on here. So, realizes he doesn't want to mine more gas. He actually just wants to get as many units out as possible, as much defense as possible, which of course is going to be getting spine crawlers up and more. He starts morphing a bane or two, which will help to some extent get rid of some of these lings in the front. And also, some splash damage onto roaches can go nicely as well. As we'll see, Guru now going to pull a few lings away over to the left hand side. He'll start to target down this third base. Obviously, the lings will come in from True as well to try and defend this as the roaches gathering together for Guru. A little bit unsure as to what he wants to do here actually i mean he's still making a lot of well he's actually going into drones now to start up his own third hatchery nice counter attack by true though i like this but good reflexes by guru or good kind of prediction by guru knowing that this is probably going to happen as you're going to be seeing the third hatchery just coming down here and he's going to be able to protect this as well putting his lings into position there and so guru comes out of this with a slightly faster third hatch the worker counts are fairly even 
As we're going to be seeing true, still has a lot of units which he's made, but I don't think he can really be too aggressive with them. I feel as though, I mean, he can be aggressive with them, but I think Guru has more than enough to realistically defend. A few of his roaches actually still have to come back home, which is maybe going to be a slight problem. As we see, Morling's being made by True. He's not gone back into drones just yet. He's also only just now started his third hatchery. As both players start up a lair, is Guru going to lose his third hatch? Well, a few lings are going to be left onto this here. Guru starts to win this fight, wrapping around at the top side and the bottom side as well. Some roaches coming in. Might need these roaches to help him out at the very end of this here. As you see, a few zerglings also running by in towards the natural expansion. True is all over the place right now. I mean, this is when True excels. We saw him in the WCS Summer Championship. He loves to play big counter-attacking player styles as those drones barely don't manage to save that queen. We're going to see one Balin coming in towards the mineral line here. Nice explosion will help to get rid of a few workers nice and quickly. As we do see in the end, the third hatchery has been cancelled as well by extra zerglings. As we're going to be seeing the third hatchery coming down. And these zerglings from true coming up to the top side of the map. And just going to be sat looking to maybe run by again. Again, true really does excel when he gets into this sort of fast counter-attack heavy playstyle as we're going to see here true does just have way more lings than guru and so guru just gonna have to run away disengage from this we'll probably loop around through the south side i'd be surprised if he committed into the base because that's just a suicide mission then for these zerglings maybe he wants to scout and just see what's going on he's going to spot a lair but he's also well he actually doesn't see the road troll which is in the back so he sees a lair doesn't get much information i guess he sees no second gas in the main base right as we're going to be seeing these zerglings continue to move around and just going to be uh, seeing, again, the third hatchery coming up over here. As we do see the uh, units just collecting together towards the left-hand side. Queen just uh, talking down this overlord as well. And we're going to be seeing the roach speed about halfway done. The plus one missile upgrade is also coming up to being about halfway done as well. A lot more Zerglings coming across the map in towards this third hatchery in the very near future. And can Guru keep it alive this time around? He's now currently down eight workers. He does have that lead in the plus one upgrade though, something which True does not have as he actually starts up Aspire. So we do see True starting to go into Aspire. His tech of the game starting to be decided here. Aspire gets started and we are going to see, well, still this third base from Guru is in just a little bit of trouble. As we're going to be seeing. I mean, again, just kind of... Uh, Link's Eye Roach Speed going to be finishing up shortly, plus one still on the way. Guru just going to set up into this and uh, looking to see what he can do next. True coming in once again though, again just trying to find an opportunity to counterattack here and he finds himself, well, a queen and a roach and he actually slips away with a good bunch of zirconies as well. So getting out with a good amount of this here, he's able to now pull back a little bit and again he's just preparing for that middleist play. Guru has to do something soon but he's afraid to because he knows as soon as he moves out onto the map he's probably going to be up against a counterattack once again. As we're just going to be seeing these units collecting together at the top side. And these zirconies still moving around the right. Not 100% certain where they want to go just yet. As here we go, Ling's going to collect together, Roaches as well. And they're probably going to move in towards this third base in just a couple of moments. Actually, we're going to see Ling's in towards the natural first to distract and to pull some units away. And that should open the door to that third expansion. You can see it's just completely undefended right now. As we're going to be seeing those Roaches and Ling's starting to move forwards. The Roaches from the Guru, they're sat over on the natural. Ling's still in the main base as well, distracting. As we're going to see, the Queen goes down very quickly. A few drones will go down as well, five or six. I mean, that's an extra six workers, which now Guru, he wasn't really, I mean, he actually had taken a bit of a worker lead. Every single time he starts to get set up in his economy, though, something else seems to hit him, and it doesn't seem to end very well for him at all. As we see those things again, just moving around. Once again, True finds an opportunity to maybe run towards the main base and just try to pick off another couple of workers. Maybe try and get another queen, slow down the production of his opponent here. Guru is currently trailing in supply, and that does not bode well. He is playing a roach-based style, which should be way up in supply. Obviously, on the ground, Guru is a little bit stronger. Problem is going to be when these middle start to come in here. And we've got 12 of them right now, already starting to move over to the right-hand side of the map. So we're going to see these 12 meters coming into the right-hand side. They'll start a trade with these roaches as well, which will mean he starts to win the fight on the ground too. And of course, now Guru has to make a decision. Does he run back home? I mean, whatever he does, it's kind of too late, actually. You know, wherever he goes with these roaches, they're going to die, so... He just continues to run them across. By running them to the left, he actually does buy more time before the Mutalists get over to the right-hand side of the map. As you're going to see, those Mutalists continue to come 
all the way over to the side. We can see a few more roaches pushing out the center. And again, I mean, they just can't move that far forward because there's so many mirrors in the sky. They'll just take so much damage so quickly. Two queens on the low ground if the spore crawler will protect for now. Third hatchery, well, has one spore crawler there. If you can get rid of that, then this third hatch becomes very engageable into four guru, as we're going to see. And he actually sort of finds a little bit of a sweet spot. He's actually kind of ping-ponging between both spore crawlers right now. But trying to find, there we go, a little bit of an area where the mutas can fight without being hit by a spore. Though on the ground, guru is running a little bit low. Oh, sorry, true is running a little bit low on re uh, reinforcements. And we are going to see some more lingers coming in. This uh, Sporkrow will now be targeted down. This Queen getting taken down as well. Some Roaches continue to take just a little bit more damage. And Roaches, I mean, again, once the Sporkrow is down, there's not going to protect those Roaches. So they just go across the map, hoping it might buy him some more time over on this side as the Mutas may go and chase. I think Guru just says, True just says, sorry, I'm getting these players mixed up all the time here. I think True just says, well, you know what? I mean, I can deal with those with reinforcements without too much of an issue. More meters on the way. We see a few infestors coming up, of course. I mean, we saw the infestation pit coming down as soon as Guru saw that this was going to be Mutalisks. And, well, you can just see he's coming in here. The even infestors don't have energy yet. And so Guru just keeps on losing infestor after infestor. A little bit more damage done. A few more of those meters falling, but only one infestor remains. The infestor Terrence forced out means that infestor also has very little energy left over. It's not going to be super useful in the very near future. And Guru is going to type out GG. True is going to take game number one of this best of three series right away. So to the upper right hand side from Sidestorm Gaming, we're going to have our blue Zerg player. It is going to be Sidestorm Gaming's true. And down to the bottom left hand side, our green Zerg is going to be Guru from True Esports. Spawning Infestors without the energy upgrade. I think he just wanted to get them out ASAP because he was like, well crap. I have to, you know, my, um, you know, mutas are coming, if I spawn them without, then, you know, I'll get there a little bit faster. Uh, but the mutas just hit too quickly anyway. Why best of three? Liquipedia says best of two. That's probably because I've copy and pasted something wrong somewhere. Um, I don't know where, where does it say best of two on Liquipedia? Because I really can't see it anywhere. It's 100% best of three. It used to be best of two in the old, in the kind of the old SGL cups, but not anymore. So, and it's best of three now. So, I don't know where, I can't actually see on the Liquipedia page where it says best of three. If you could point it out to me, I would fix it, but I'm currently, I'm, I'm probably being like really blind. I just can't see it anywhere. If you point it out, I will fix it though. Or if you let me know, obviously you point it out, but let me know and I'll fix it. All right. So, as we jump into game number two. Just going to be having a look to see how these players want to open. We're actually going to see uh, this time around both players opening with the fast hatchery. So hatchery first, rather than the pool first from Guru. So hatch gas pool. I mean, last game we got we got into the mid game fairly standardly. We saw a little bit of ling aggression. Guru cancelled the third, and then True sort of took his advantage on the counter attack, taking down Guru's third base, and also taking down a few uh, a few kind of uh, queens and so on along the way as well. As we're just going to be seeing this uh, overlord popping out, and. Um, yeah, just going to be seeing the uh, overlords coming across the map. Nothing too crazy at the very start of this. Wardy is not English or American. No, I'm in, I'm English. It's just the the thing with the th and the th. I can't. I still. I can't say because I just don't hear it. Like, I just don't pay attention to it. I don't know. I act, I've looked it up, and there's like apparently it's like a thing where it's just like a slang. It's just like it's sort of like a slang of speech. It's like there's also a thing apparently where you say like brother and brother, and it's like different as well. You say like a V instead of a th as well, and. Um, it's just like a, it's just like a, it's a way of speech. It's not really a proper way of speech. It's like a little bit slangy. Um, it's not proper at all, but it's just the way. Like I don't know. My my mum called me out of it for year, for, out, out for it for years and years. I've just never heard it, and I don't know. I just can't say it. So it's just something I can't do. I it's crazy. It drove me crazy. So like about probably like four or five months ago, actually. I really got bothered by it, and my uh, mum brought it up again, and it's just like, you know, you still can't say that. Like, are you fucking retarded or something? I'm like, no, I just can't say it. So I went and started looking on YouTube and, like, trying to figure out how to say it properly and stuff like that. But, um... But, yeah, like, I mean... I, I was trying to say, I just can't do it. Like, I, I sat there for ages, and then in my cast, I started paying loads of attention to it. And what happened was, I was just like, and he goes towards the third base. Because I just mess up so much. It is awful. Ah, uh, so the best of two, it's, yeah, it says best of two on the uh, main Liquipedia page. Yeah, well, that's because it used to be like that. It's, come, it's different now because the format changed, so the format just hasn't been updated. If you check out the cup number three page, it's all correct. 
So yeah. Anyways, let's uh, talk about this game because we have seen fast free hatcheries from both players this time around. That means we are going to be seeing a little bit of Ling Bane action from both in the early stages. Both actually playing just kind of massive of drones right now. Lots of drones on the way from both players. Nothing too out of the ordinary or too aggressive uh, from either so far. We do see a bailing nest up from both as well. So both players do have a bailing nest right now. I'm just going to be seeing a lair on the way up right now from True as well. So True with a bin, uh, with a lair on the way. I'm just going to be seeing a uh, evil chamber coming down from Guru. So slightly different ways to follow up on these three bases. It's actually going to be a uh, double evolution chamber right now. So we're just going to be seeing double evolution chamber coming in. We're going to be seeing. Obviously, that means there's a lot of upgrades coming in from Guru, and I imagine it'll probably be melee upgrades because when you go double evil, you don't generally go for roach based play. You generally do go for um, you generally do go for the melee base play and there's mass circlings and you use them ling advantages and then you maybe play muters later on in the game as well with the ling upgrades already. It looks as though true though if this very fast lair is just going to go into a you know, muters straight away of his own so it's going to create a very interesting dynamic where if Guru did want to go muters of his own he's going to have to play defensive mutalists which means that he's going to have to sit back on spores and with a queen count until you can maybe catch up on mutalists by out harassing his opponent on the ground with the zerglings so let's see how this is going to go as we do just have my uh, melee upgrades continue to come in right now. There's the lair coming down for Guru. There's going to be seeing that Spire on the way up, as we mentioned before. So, True just going to go straight in towards the middle of this here. We do see a little bit of a skirmish over here. Obviously, upgrades are not in the game just yet from Guru, which means these fights right now are completely even. It's just going to come down to numbers. Obviously, the more Guru skirmishes, the better it is for him, because generally he wants his opponent to keep making links and he wants his opponent to keep on fighting as his plus one plus one upgrades finish up so i'm gonna see these links continue to come across a few things do sneak by in towards that third base and just again seeing what they can get up to obviously not being too successful it's sort of weird because this map would be very good i think for link upgrades if it wasn't for all of the rocks so i think one of the things guru is going to have to aim to do here in the near future is start getting rid of these rocks around the map because otherwise, the only way in towards his opponent's base is this one ramp here. And so if he doesn't get, you know, if his opponent just defends that ramp, his Ling heavy play style is going to get shut down rather easily. So he needs to start working his way through these rocks here, the rocks to the top side, maybe even these rocks to the right, if he really wants to play this sort of multitask heavy, counterattack all over the place play style with this Ling double upgrade play. We're all going to be seeing Guru with an extra macro hatch coming in as well. I mean, that's necessary because when you play in lanes, you just need so much lava. So we're going to see a couple of Banes coming in from either side. It's a bit of an interesting trade there. Um, no one really taking a major advantage. Ooh, nice little connection at the end there for Guru, though. It does take a little bit of a better one as we do see the meters coming out right now. And Guru recognizing this is actually just going to go into an infestation pit. So still has those Ling upgrades, and we'll see what you can do with them. Obviously, right now, these Zerglings initially are getting more or less shut down before they get across the map, even. Spines here as well, and the is just going to continue to clean up. So good cleanup so far by True. What is Guru's plan, then, in the long run? Obviously, the infestation pit coming down. He'll add on a few extra Queens as well to help him play defensively against this. But his Ling upgrades aren't really kind of coming through for him at all right now. We know we've not seen anything come of the investment into plus one melee and most plus one carapace. He's not really won any fights on the ground. He's not really looking to fight again anytime soon because he just lost so many Zerglings as well. And True really is just starting to shut this down. Very, very, very simply, actually. I mean, to be completely fair, he's not, you know, Guru's just not getting any opportunity to really do what he wants to do here, I don't think. True of the uh, middleist play here. And once again, second game in a row, he goes into the middle. As so you go, you see a hive on the way up. So obviously, he wants to go into like Infestor, huh? Infestor Viper or something. Oh, that's unfortunate. He loses an Infestor as it pops out. And now, spores on the main base keep on getting taken down. Guru is taking a lot of damage here. As we'll see, the mutant's just going to dive on towards this spore crawler in the third base as well. That's going to go down also here. And this just continues to be damage done by True at this point. Now he runs in. He's so confident he's running through Spore Crawls to target down Queens and Infestors and whatever else. He takes another Queen down there. Guru missing his Transfuse. Every unit that Guru loses now just puts him a little further behind. And you know he's trying to play this sort of defensive playstyle, but it's just not working out for him. Because True just got so far ahead initially that um, now Guru is just, you know, whatever he tries to do just doesn't really work out. He's going to be seeing those links from Guru getting shut down once again. And we're all just going to be seeing... The Queen's going to turn and fight, and Festa gets uh, targeted down as well. Sporecrawler here, just going to continue to take a bit more damage also. I mean, the Sporecrawler is actually doing quite a lot of damage. He is picking off quite a few of these meters, but True doesn't care, because he knows he's that far ahead. He knows he's just got so many meters. He can afford to run in and just do extra damage, put Guru even further behind. 
if he does keep on doing this and maybe he gets to the point where he's overcommitted, then Guru might kind of begin to come back in this a bit. But even right now, I mean, these links try and move across the map. Actually, and he pulls them back up. I just don't see where Guru's plan is going. He's still not doing anything with these Zerglings. He's got 2 2 melee upgrades about to finish, but considering we haven't seen Zerglings across the map for him in the past 3 4 minutes, I really don't think that those 2 2 upgrades are going to do anything. He has got an Ultra Cavern on the way down, of course. I mean, that is one of the obvious things I guess I failed to mention when the Hive was on the way up. Uh, he might just try and get into Ultras here. I mean, it's you know it's something he was probably planning for a long time, but I don't know how well the Ultras are really going to work when there's so many mutas still in the skies. Oftentimes, you go mutas into Ultras. Uh, but to go straight into Ultras, I just don't know. I mean, there's so many mutalists, those Ultras obviously don't shoot up. Obviously, that's what the Queens and Festers, etc. are for. Nice Fungal Growth here does catch the Middleist, but there's no follow up. There's a Spore Crawler underneath, sure, but that's about it. And so the Investors go down. Again, True is very happy to make this sort of trade. He comes back. Uh, this Spore Crawler does get transfused up. We're actually going to see the Ultra Cavern going to get taken down. I mean, even if the Ultras get started up in production, they're going to be without Kindness Plane, and so they're just going to go down even faster than they should be. As we're going to be seeing these few. Uh, he is just moving over to the left hand. Uh, Side once again. So we just continue to do damage. I mean, again, 20 workers going down recently. True, you can see though, he's definitely been throwing a lot away himself. The supplies are becoming a lot closer than they have been for a while. Yes, True's got some money in the bank as well. There's that kite in his plane. Ultras will start. The Ultra Cavern didn't fall. So, this is the one way for Guru to maybe get back in this. I love what Guru's just done. He broke down his own rocks to the right hand side to help him maybe move out onto the map and get an attack going. True's on top of it though, shuts it down very easily. And just like that. It's, um, well, just like that, we're sort of, uh, seeing True once again, just stopping Guru from getting back into this game at all. Lurker Den is actually on the way up in the main base right now. So you're going to see a couple of Banelings going to run in towards the natural expansion. They do get three workers, not too much damage done. As you're going to see Banelings continue to move forwards right now out of True. So continue to move forwards here. These Banelings are going to look to see what they can do. Infestors at the front again. They actually land a uh, Fungal Grove on just a few Zerglings. Not the best situations. And again, it's the Banelings, which are just cleaning up the mineral line. I mean, True doesn't even have to dive in with the uh, Mutalisks this time. In fact, with that many Queens, he probably can't dive in with the Mutalisks. When you consider how many Transfusers will come out, don't think their Mutas will ever kill it off. And actually, the Muta count has gotten... Uh, Fairly low here, only 12 remaining. Obviously, True has stopped making Mutalists as he decides to go into Lurkers now to help him sort of hold positions against the incoming Ultralist Witch out of Guru. Again, True has still got a lot of money in the bank right now, which he's saving for that uh, switch in towards the Lurkers. But the supplies are fairly close. I mean, you know, True is potentially already kind of one or two big mistakes away from completely throwing this still, despite him being kind of what has felt like the dominant force throughout. He's got 4th base set up, but he's only 6 workers ahead. Guru's main is only just now starting to mine out, you know, so he's actually not really oversaturated that much anywhere. Which is, you know, he's doing pretty good in saturation, so... Both players are still mining somewhat similarly. True's actually mining a lot more gas than Guru, which is probably one of the bigger differences at this point of the game. 12 lurkers on the way from True. Well, that might just be the issue for Guru, because everything he's been building into... None of it is a way to kind of deal with the Lurkers. You're going to see the Mutas coming into the right-hand side. Try and get rid of this 4th base. Queens and Infestors coming forwards. And a single Mutalist gets caught by the Fungal Growth. Better than nothing, but of course he would have rather caught 2 or 3 at least. And the more Mutas he gets rid of, the more freedom he has on the map. As you are going to be seeing. That Ultra continue to move through the center. He's going to run right into a bunch of Lurkers. And you can see the Lurkers... <laughs> Make that uh, Ultralist just disappear out of nowhere. So this is going to be the issue as True pushes forwards. All of a sudden his supply has exploded as he goes into some Roach production to back this up as well. He's just realizing that he has enough on the ground to push forwards. And, you know, he's just going to keep reinforcing that as well to make sure that at no point in this game can Guru kind of come back in this. The Lurkers are going to get rid of another Queen very quickly. This fourth base is also going to go down very swiftly. And Guru, a couple more Lurkers, Roaches and a few Lingers reinforcing this army now to the right hand side. You have to imagine he'll start moving in towards the third base in the next couple of moments. Oh, the Infestors walk into the Lurkers as well. That's two of them going down. It's a mistake that Guru just really cannot afford at this point in time. It's true. Swings around to the left-hand side for another time in this game. Another opportunity to get more damage done. We are going to be seeing that actually Guru is going to initiate the engagement into those Lurkers. Transfusers on the Ultras are keeping them alive for a little while, but he is starting to run out. And uh, he just doesn't have enough to keep on pushing through. It's actually very close. He gets rid of quite a lot of these units. But as the uh, transfusers end, Guru's just going to have to tap out, and True is going to take two, uh, game number two. And 